This is our lunar permafrost mining robot. The reason you might want to mine lunar permafrost is because it's useful for lots of stuff. We have a scoop on the front, and we have a tool coupler on the arm. So the tool coupler can pick up different excavation tools. The primary excavation tool we've been using is a rock grinder wheel. So this spins and then breaks up the material and then rolls it down into the scoop. Our tool coupler is based on simple design from excavators. It's got two pins on the tool that the coupler grabs one at a time. It's very uh, easy to automate. So we can the, the robot can pick up its own tools and then drive them around to uh, anywhere that needs excavating. So in this case, I'm going to demonstrate the excavation on snow. We're going to pivot the front scoop down so that the snow is going to roll directly into the front scoop. This also keeps the robot from falling forward. So here's the rock grinder actually cutting, and the idea is that the cut material is going to just roll directly into the scoop. It's not this fast on actual lunar permafrost, although have to say, we don't really know what the actual lunar permafrost is like. But snow, you can demonstrate how almost all of the snow is ending up in the front scoop. A little bit of it ends up on the, the front of the robot, but most of it is staying away from our sensors on top of the robot arm or our electronics on the back side of the robot. So ideally, the robot is not going to end up covered in uh, things that it had just excavated. So we can make multiple passes by basically pass the tool over the cut, uh, reset. This uh, t takes a while, so here I've sped up the, the footage. You can cut forward or backward, although cutting forward tends to make a big pile that then bogs down the tool on the next pass. So just making, uh, making cuts downward seems like it, it works better. That's an example where we actually went and hit rocks underneath the snow. And the, our, our cutter tool is all steel and seems totally fine with uh, uh, mining some rocks. Here, here we're going to pick up the material. So we drive forward and tilt our scoop back. There's no having to transfer the material into the, uh, onto the robot. It's basically ready to go. So we can drive off anywhere we like now. But we're going to put down the tool first because, A, the tool is heavy. There's no need to haul it when we're hauling material around. And B, we need to recharge the robot and the tool. The tool has batteries, so ideally we'd be able to put them on a charger here. This is a pickup truck, uh, so it doesn't charge. And uh, we don't have an automated way to hook, unhook the wires. I'm doing that manually for now. That's definitely a to-do. Here we're hauling material around and demonstrating the robot could have lights on it so it can see where it's going. So we, we drive off to a water extractor to cook the water out of the permafrost that's useful for making rocket fuel. Here I'm dumping it into, for example, the intake hopper for a water extractor. Might uh, Ideally, would be, would be down low enough we can just dump directly into it. Before we cut again, we might scan the cut face. So that's schematically illustrated. Here's the depth camera that we have on board to keep track of where we're cutting and demonstrating that we can cut a uh, concrete simulant and have a good production rate. So we're Aurora Robotics Lab from the University of Alaska Fairbanks.